And I've got a, really I've got a cricket ball here and I've got a bit of sandpaper. Uh, and what I, on a serious point, uh, this scandal... <laughs> How did I know you were going to do something like that, Pierce? <laughs> <laughs> well, I also have a bit of tape and I've other things. Here's a serious point about this, Shane. I love cricket, as you know, yeah. and you and I are, are good friends. Uh, I, was, I was very taken aback by the scale of this scandal that engulfed the Australian team, and I'll say why. My understanding of international cricket, and indeed professional cricket generally, is that every team basically fiddles with the cricket ball. They try and rough up one side to make the other side shiny and get a bit of swing going or whatever. Yeah, look, it's a good point, uh, Pierce. I think, first of all, I think it's the biggest grey area in cricket is ball shining, ball tampering, call it what you like. First of all, the other thing is the Australians, you can't defend what the Australians did. It was un-Australian. It was embarrassing to watch that as a former Australian cricket. It was very disappointing to watch what happened and unfold in Cape Town. But having said that, if every if people talked about the premeditation of it, of putting sandpaper in the pocket, taking it out on the field, and then tampering with the ball. If someone, uh, a player from any country in the world, decides to put mints or something in their pocket in the dressing room and then go out onto the field, that's premeditated as well. You sort of ball tamper or you don't ball tamper. So for me, there's this huge grey area for the ICC to work out how do we come down on these people that want to ball tamper? How do we police it? It's very hard to police if someone's chewing chewing gum and then licks their fingers and puts it on the ball and shines the ball. That's, how do you stop that? So it's very hard to police. It's a real big grey area. Uh, the second thing is, Pierce, about the punishments you talked about for the Australians. I thought they were very poorly advised at the time as well. I thought in Cape Town they should have issued a statement and so we've got a test match going on. After this test match, we will face our consequences and, and listen to answer your questions, etc., etc. I thought the punishments were of 12 months ban, which in real terms is probably an eight to ten million dollar fine for someone like Steve Smith, is very harsh. Now I'm not defending anything. I'm, you can't defend what they did, their actions. But I thought the penalties um, it didn't fit the crime, and I, I don't think that was. I think that was way too harsh. I thought if they had been sacked as captain and vice-captain, missed the test match, is what the ICC gave them, I thought that was enough. Um, I think what they've been put through, they've been basically like they've been, uh, they've been treated like Pablo Escobar, right. um, where they basically just ball-tampered. And I'm not saying just in a, a lightly, it was disgraceful what they did, but um, you know, they did make a mistake, and they're not horrible people. Everyone makes a mistake, and I think that uh, Steve Smith, Dave Water and Bancroft just made a mistake. I mean, these guys, they've been very severely punished. Some people in the game think absolutely rightly. Others, like you and me, actually, think it has probably been overdone and they've been, you know, targeted in a way that many other people haven't been. What was interesting to me, Shane, was the way the Australian nation rose up in utter revulsion from the mm -hmm. Prime Minister to the media to many famous Australians. Yeah. It, this really cut to the heart of what many people view being an Australian's about. Play, play hard, play tough, but play fair. Don't cheat. Absolutely, Pierce. I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I think when you get the Prime Minister coming out and contacting Cricket Australia and publicly commenting about it, um, obviously it was always going to be bigger and that got everyone's attention. And I, I agree with you. I thought it was unfair the, the treatment they got. Um, I thought it was unfair the punishments they got. Um, but I think the, the euphoria that surrounded it, I think it also gave every single person a chance in the, in the cricketing world to sink the boots into Australia. Whether that was because Australia beat them or whether they don't like the way the Australian team play, whether they don't like a, a certain individual, whether it be Smith, Warner or Bancroft, whatever the reason, everyone piped up and it sort of grabbed everyone's attention, didn't it? I mean, not just from the cricketing public, I suppose, from everyone's attention. And everyone had an opinion. Whether you walked into a pub or at a dinner party, everyone said, did you see those Australians? And I think of why it cut so many Australians so deeply is what you said. It was un-Australian to do that. I think Australians have always been in the face um, of, of their opposition from whatever country, especially in Ashes sort of cricket. But around the world, we're you know, a country worth we're about 25 million people we have here, and we've always sort of gone beyond our sporting abilities. We've always been a sporting nation that's done very, very well in all sports. And I think lately in the Australian cricket team over the last few years, they've just lost their way. And I think in modern day sport at the moment, it's basically win at all costs. And everyone pushes the envelope where we like to see, Australians especially like to see their own, play a way that's hard, it's tough, it's fair, but you never cheat. And if the opposition beat you, you shake their hands and say, well played, we'll get you next time. Shame.